Now y'all already know over here we love Sarah Ellison. She is super cool, super sweet, super kind, and she's authentic with it. And me and Sarah, we have had plenty of wide receiver debates when it came to the Baltimore Ravens from way back. So I got a lot of love for Sarah Ellison. Got it, always have, always will, because she is genuinely good people. But Sarah, why you had to do that, man? Why you had to bring this old stuff up? I just finished telling Team Keep It Clean just yesterday how it ain't looking good for the Baltimore Ravens and Devontae Adams. And I still feel like that, but why'd you have to go and bring this up to give us just a glimmer of hope? Sarah's the one that dug up this interview from January 20th of this year, right before the Baltimore Ravens were taking on the Houston Texans. It was Amber Theo Harris and James Jones talking directly to Devontae Adams. Let's listen. Speaking of Lamar Jackson, you could either play on a team where Lamar Jackson is the quarterback and you're guaranteed a Super Bowl, but as the leading receiver, mm. you might have 858 yard season like Zay Flowers did, Max. Ooh. Or you could go to a team like Miami, Dallas, uh, Detroit, where, you know, they're slinging that thing. I know two of those have been eliminated, so mm -hmm. they're not going to the Super Bowl. But they're slinging that thing. And perhaps your Hall of Fame career is solidified. You have CD you Lamb, 1,600 yards. Hey, look. That's a lot. CD did this thing. And yes, he did. I don't want to take no credit, but I did get on the uh, I Am Athlete and tell y'all boy CD was a top five receiver and everybody was <laughs> trying to give me backlash and all that. And I said, okay. I said, Mike Evans. Hey, CD like that, that, though. You know, so I ain't, I ain't, I ain't going to get into that. But uh, I would say. Right CD now, definitely one of them guys, man. I've, I've had big seasons, man. To me, to me, it's like, this is a long-winded answer, but to me, I think it's funny that we judge who's the best receiver off of who has the most yards anyway, because not everybody's getting the same targets. Mm. They're all going to take the same. Like, that that shouldn't be what's, like, to me, if you have 1,300 and somebody has 15 and a half, to me, you can have a better team okay. than with that 1,300, depending on what the touchdown and, and just how it looked, mm. whatever you did. So I've had big seasons. I don't necessarily need efficiency. That, that would feel great. And now, if you told me I had to, I was gonna get the record, I might have to think about something different. If you said two, two K, then that's, that might be the but, mm -hmm. but if you giving me a bowl and I get to get out there with Dub and Lamar and, and, and have mm. fun, what be having? I, I think. I, I think I might take that eight, eight, nine hundred and just and keep it. Give me ten tugs and, I, and I'm good. <laughs> and that was straight from Devontae Adams' mouth to all of our ears. So many people in this whole Devontae Adams conversation, they say, why would he want to even go to the Baltimore Ravens? Why would he even entertain joining an offense like that? They're a run-heavy offense. He ain't going to get his numbers. He don't want to go to the Baltimore Ravens and just run blocking. <laughs> when people say that, it's funny. But Devontae Adams said it himself. Sarah, this is all your fault for giving us hope. But Devontae Adams said it himself like, hey, if it's between getting them 1,500, 1,600 yards uh, and breaking more records and whatnot versus getting like eight, 900 yards and a chance to play with somebody like a Lamar Jackson, but really a chance to compete for a Super Bowl, he said he's taking that option all day, every day. And like we explained in the video yesterday, again, I, I still – don't think it's going to happen, but there is still that little bit of hope because even though it came out today, oh, Devontae Adams, he, he gave us the teams that he wants to play for, and it was the uh, the Jets and the Saints, and that's, of course, his previous quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, and his more recent quarterback, Derek Carr. So we, we, we get that, and there's some other relationships that he has with the New Orleans Saints as well. But with Devontae Adams, um, just thinking about him with the Baltimore Ravens, how he would fit in. He would upgrade the quality of the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers by 20 miles, 20 miles. And that's no shot at the Baltimore Ravens wide receivers, but Devontae Adams is like that. He's somebody that's well established. And while he is 31, it ain't like he's like, oh, I, I can barely move out there on the field. No, Ravens just saw it like two weeks ago. He showed the Baltimore Ravens like, hey, this is me. Like, I, I, I'm still him. I can still play in this league. So with a Devontae Adams, like, he will make the Baltimore Ravens that much better like that. And he talked about it, too. And, and it's a good conversation to have. And, and, I, and I get it. People will be, oh, why would we pay all that money to have him come here? He would only catch, like, a certain amount of passes a game or whatnot. He wouldn't be going off like he normally goes off receiving-wise. But he will be ready. And, and just to have a wide receiver of that caliber on the Baltimore Ravens, man, it would do so much positive for our team. It would be the best wide receiver 
that Lamar Jackson has ever had, period. Ever. Ever. And, and, and when you think about that, to think that a, a 31-year-old wide receiver who would be possibly joining his third team very, very soon, that would be the best wide receiver that Lamar Jackson had. Yes, he would be. But he ain't just your average 31-year-old NFL player. Again, Devontae Adams, he still got it, man. He, he really, really does. And he showed, like, hey, it's not all about the yards. He talked about it's about efficiency. He said you could have somebody who got 1,300 yards versus somebody who got 15, 1,500 yards, but that 1,300 yards, he could be better than the one that got 1,500 yards. He'll be having a better season. He could be having more touchdowns and whatnot. And we know, we know, especially this Baltimore Ravens offense, especially their passing offense, especially how things are going right now with Derrick Henry just running all over the place, their passing offense is strictly based off of efficiency. Getting the most out of the least. And what I mean when I say that, getting the most out of every single pass because, especially these past two weeks, like, Lamar been chilling. Lamar been laid back. He been, oh, okay. Oh, I got to pass the ball. Okay, cool. No problem. I'll do it. I'll make it happen. And, and you just, when your number's called, you got to make the most of it. Now, Lamar, his numbers from the other night, they didn't look bad. But, again, it's, it's about efficiency. There were some drops. There were Three different drops that could have been, that could have gave Lamar a chunk more yards. That could have gave those receivers and tight end more yards. There were three drops. And one of them was a touchdown. Now, of course, that, that drop and incompletion was negated by the, the, the defensive holding call. But still, that was a touchdown. That perfect pass to Zay Flowers down the sideline. When he did the Devontae Adams toe tap, I said, oh, that's looking like number 17 right there. That was perfect, but Zay Flowers dropped. And then, of course, the Mark Andrews drop as well. So, Devontae Adams, we've seen it, man. Like, even in the Raiders game, we saw, he had a drop in that game. He, and the, the drop that he had, that was a touchdown, too. But he certainly made up for it, man. Devontae Adams is a, a wide receiver that makes a lot more plays than he misses. And like it's been talked about before, too, Devontae Adams, he would be yet another weapon, yet another piece for the Baltimore Ravens offense that would make them just that much more unpredictable. That much more unpredictable. You, you think about if you have on the field, you got obviously your five offensive linemen. Then you got, of course, Lamar Jackson. You got Derrick Henry. But then you got Isaiah Likely. You got Mark Andrews. You got Devontae Adams. And you got Zay Flowers. That's your personnel. That's who's out there. What, what are the Baltimore Ravens going to do? They got so many options on what their offense, so many options. Now, something that I didn't know. Now, we did hear about his high salaries in the next two years, but I didn't know that the next two years of his deal are not guaranteed. That makes life so much easier uh, when it comes to renegotiating and all that. That, that makes life a lot easier. Now, there's still some high numbers that you got to work with, um, but that, the fact that it's not guaranteed, that helps out a lot. That's something that I found out today. So, I don't mean to get anybody hopes. If your hopes are up, it's Sarah Ellison's fault. It's all her fault. We still love you, Sarah Ellison. But this is all your fault that we feel like right now we actually got some hope. Team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video. And also leave a like on the video. Special shout out to the all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. Y'all got some new emojis that y'all can use in the comment section now for these regular videos and during the live stream too. So I look forward to seeing y'all apply those. But somebody else, we just talked about hope. That Sir Ellison gave us with Devontae Adams the possibility, but there's somebody who's a lot more realistic uh, that we have hope for with the Baltimore Ravens, and that is none other than Keaton Mitchell. Uh, Keaton Mitchell, uh, he is amazing at running back, electric at running back, just lightning at running back. We remember him last year, and we've talked about it in excess all throughout this offseason and during this season, too. Ke Keaton Mitchell is just, he one of them guys, man. That dude was a playmaker in the running game, but also in the passing game as well. And then so many times when we see and watch Derrick Henry, when we see and watch Justice Hill, we get excited because, like, man, th those guys are out there killing it right now in the running game and in the passing game. But then we think, oh, my goodness, Keaton Mitchell's still on the way back, too. So he could join Derrick Henry and Justice. It's going to be nice, man. It's going to be sweet. But today in the presser, 
John Harbaugh was asked about Keaton Mitchell. What's the status with Keaton Mitchell? What's going down? What's happening with Keaton Mitchell? And John Harbaugh said the following. He said it's impossible to put a timetable on it exactly right now. He did. He said, I will say this, though. He is right on schedule. The schedule was for him to be back this season. So that lets us know, like, okay, he'll be back this season. But, like, when? When? We want to know, Harbaugh. But you know, you know Harbaugh, wait, he ain't going to give us that. Harbaugh is not going to let us know when Keith Mitchell is returning until, like, Keith Mitchell is getting ready to walk out there on that practice field. That's when Harbaugh will let us know. Uh, but he also said uh, exactly when that would be. We're probably closer to understanding that now just because we're closer toward the end of that. But we can't pin it down yet. He's not close enough yet to really talk about it, but he's doing really well. To me, this is just me. I, I don't know nothing. This is just my own assumption, especially based off of John Harbaugh and things that he has said in the past before when he says that a player is close and that sounds like he's saying that Keaton Mitchell is close. Not all the way there yet. I, this is just me. I think that Keaton Mitchell will start practicing within two weeks. And I know that's kind of vague. It ain't no like, oh, he pinned it down to the, But I think within the next two weeks. That's what it sounds like to me. So not this week during this Bengals game, but after that or the week after. That's, that, that's just me. So we'll see. But with John Harbaugh letting us know that Keaton Mitchell, he is coming back soon. That does give us even more hope. Now we've reached my favorite part of the videos where we get to hear from you. If you would like to have your question featured, just send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. And if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenfids. You can send your question directly on Patreon. First question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron. My guy Stone two times. He said, yo, what's up, Ing? What's going on, Stone? He said, I know a bunch of talk has been going on surrounding the possibility of trading for another weapon, specifically wide receiver. Me, personally, I'd love if they went all in for a guy like Devontae Adams, but I think we all know that's unrealistic for the Baltimore Ravens. I think the more likely option would be a guy like Cortland Sutton or DeAndre Hopkins, but hold on! Okay. I like where he's going with it so far. Let's see. He said, do you think that the Ravens would be willing to trade away one of our pieces that we currently have in order to acquire more talent. This is my thinking. The Baltimore Ravens currently have a wide receiver trio of Zay, Bate, and Nelly, along with a tight end trio of Likely, Mark, and Charlie. That's six guys right there who can be thrown in and make a difference when we need them to. That's without mentioning King Henry. We know that Mark Andrews hasn't looked the same since his previous injuries, and although I hate if they traded Mark, do you think that's a realistic possibility if they wanted to add to the wide receiver room? Hmm. I think it's a possibility, but I don't think they would need to trade him in order to bring in a Devontae Adams. I don't think they would have to send Mark as part of that. Um, because with Mark, man, imagine that. Like Brock Bowers, Mark Andrews on a – oh, my goodness. That would be filthy, filthy, nasty. Um, and then I think the other Titan was doing something. But anyway uh, – I, I don't think they would need to for Devontae Adams. If you're just talking about a weapon in general, they could. And Mark Andrews could be a very valuable trade piece. Uh, so it all just depends. But for Devontae Adams specifically, I don't think they would have to include a Mark Andrews. I, I think that would – um. Not that it would be an unfair trade if Ravens trade like Mark Andrews or Devontae Adams, and of course there'll be some draft picks as well, but I just, I don't think having him in the deal, in the package, would be necessary. He said, there's so many guys to feed at the moment, and I don't see them trading away draft capital for someone who would only get one or two targets a game. I mean, look at Tez Walker. We haven't played him yet at all. We all want more talent around Lamar, but at what cost? Hope you and the family have a blessed day. Much love. Oh, appreciate that. This is a fun way to get these questions started off. At what cost? That part right there. At what cost have what has it costed to not put more talent around Lamar Jackson? Playoffs, better defense, less options on offense, uh, more predictability on offense, especially in clutch moments. What has that costed? So that's something to think about too. Just a thought. Hit me out. Next question came from my guy, Evan. He said, hey, Graven, uh, Nyan here wishing you and yours prosperity, good health, and great fortune. It's been a while since I sent something in, but I haven't stopped watching. I swear, as soon as funds are consistently available, you'll be my first Patreon subscription, and I'm grabbing some merch. Hope y'all got stuff in toddler sizes. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. I got to actually check on that because I'm not sure. I, I appreciate you raising that, but I appreciate you supporting, man. The, will the funds get right or not? And I know they will, but it, it's, it's okay either way. Either way, if you do end up becoming a patron, great. If you don't end up becoming a patron, everything is still great. Don't, please don't put no pressure on yourself to do that.
because it's not a requirement. It's not a necessity, anything like that. I'm going to still love you regardless. Uh, he said, anyway, I wholeheartedly agree with keeping Mark Andrews around for Lamar and the offense. Don't want to disrupt what we have growing. I mean, even though, like, <laughs> like it ain't been nothing to disrupt. But Mark Andrews ain't been catching nothing over the past couple of weeks. But, hey, Lamar Jackson did say today in the press that, like, Mark Andrews, he's been a really good team player. He's been out there blocking, so he's been a part of Baltimore Ravens' success. Anyway, he said, I don't want, uh, oh, excuse me, craziest thing that came across my mind today. If we did want to trade Andrews out, why not to the Falcons for Kyle Pitts? Baltimore has historically been known for two things, defense and run game, but we always seem to forget our third best quality as an organization, tight end talent and development. Our system is made for the position to thrive. I mean, other reasons include underutilizing Atlanta, especially as of late, never had a proper breakout season, just as physical and athletic as Isaiah likely. It seems kind of like a win-win situation. ATL gets a proven weapon for Kirk. We get younger at the position and the talent drop-off wouldn't be too stark. Mm. No, I don't, I don't think they would. A tight end for a tight end? Uh, one that Lamar already got a connection with versus one that he would have to establish a, a connection with. Not that he couldn't do it. They could obviously do it. Um, yeah, Kyle Pitts is more athletic than a Mark Andrews. Um, but I just, no, nah, I wouldn't see the Falcons doing that. Especially, like, think about the Falcons. Like, Kyle Pitts, he ain't on his second contract yet. He ain't on his second contract yet. So they would, have, they would give up their tight end, their up-and-coming tight end. For a tight end who maybe have some question marks right now. They don't know how healthy he is or is not right now. Um, been kind of quiet recently. Um, to trade Kyle Pitts out, to bring him out, I don't even think Falcons would want to do that. Uh, he also said, um, now I'm not too much of a numbers guy, but I believe he is approaching the end of his rookie deal. Can't recall, honestly. Uh, and I'm not sure, uh, I'm not too sure how that would affect our cap space. But honestly, I think he's a perfect fit for our system and could get a second chance to be used to his full potential. I'm just saying. Oh, I think he would do great with the Ravens. But I just don't think the Falcons would want to do something like that. Right, he said, do you think this is a solid move and would you do it and when? Uh, anyway, thank you for your content. Always looking forward to your video, to when your videos drop. Uh, and shout out to Flock Nation and Team Keep It Clean. Let's keep the momentum going and play all four quarters against Cincy. Ravens, please listen to that part. Ravens need to get... Adams. Next question came from my guy Sean. He said, Hey, Raven, I'm sitting here at my desk at work and a notification pops up on my phone about Devontae Adams saying the Raiders will be looking for a second round pick. That's a no brainer for me to get one of the best receivers in the game. Instantly improves this team and makes the wide receiver room a little more feared. Nothing better than having teams stressed out over having multiple positions to worry about when playing us. Knowing the Ravens, they will wait until he. <laughs> he said, Knowing the Ravens, they'll wait until he's 47 to get him. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> I hope you had a really good day at work yesterday and also today too. Um, again, we're gonna see. Like you, you said, there's a no-brainer. Second round pick, one of the best receivers in the game, instantly improves the team, makes the wide receiver room a little more fit. Yeah, because remember, you go a couple years back when they had a second round pick and there was a player, pretty good player, who was available. They already had their linebackers, but they were like, you know what? Let's make our linebacker group even better. We'll send that second round pick for Roquan Smith. And they got him, and look how that turned out. Keeping Marlon Humphrey. Next question came from my guy Slager. He said, uh, hey, hope you and the family are doing well. I don't know why people are talking about getting rid of Marlon. He's been doing great this season. Do you feel like we should get rid of him this season? No, I, I, I don't. I, I really don't. Yeah, and he has been playing really, really good football. He got a little mishap here and there, but you're playing cornerback, so that's going to happen. But overall, he's been playing really good football. Uh, he said, I feel like we should keep him. I found your channel during week two, and I've been locked in since. Keep up the good work. I appreciate that. Thank you. He said, oh, yeah, and did you see him push that guy for no reason against the Bills, or is there something I missed? Uh, he was talking about it on his podcast, uh, him and Jack Settlement podcast that dropped today. Um, and he said that he, he wanted to get him before – he wanted to get that tight end before that tight end got him. Uh, so Marlo was just uh, staying on top of things. Next question came from DeVell. He said, peace, blessings to you and the family. I appreciate your podcast to the fullest. Uh, DeVell, I appreciate you to the fullest. Thank you, man. He said, I think we should get Bateman up. Oh, my goodness. And Humphrey. And a pick for an elite wide out like Devontae Adams. I'm over both players. Oh, my goodness. Bateman, like, that, what a contrast for, with the two questions that were just asked. One saying, every all about keeping Marlowe. One saying, he's trying to get Marlowe up and Bateman. And like, rip both? For, no, you ain't got to do all that. Keep Marlowe, keep Bateman, and you could get Devontae Adams. Like, it, it ain't going to take, like... Raiders gonna want that draft pick. Yeah, they may want to play it too, but they they really gonna want the draft pick. They gonna want a, as high of, of a draft pick as they can get. I don't think they get no second round pick. I don't. I think they'll get like a third and a fifth. I don't think they get no second round pick at all. Obviously, you want to start off high though. You want to put it out there like, hey, this is what we want in hopes of getting it. But you know, realistically, like 
we y'all trying to move off this player. This player trying to move off from y'all. And when relationships get like that and the public knows, they know that you ain't getting what you asked for, but you, you'll get a little bit lower. Uh, but anyway, he also said uh, Humphrey hasn't been good since the year he got his contract. Bateman don't got got it. That's it. No, Humphrey been good this year. We all Humphrey like that. And with Bateman, the jury's still out, I think. Um, and it's, it's, it's hard to really see if Bateman has it or not in this offense because, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, it's all about efficiency. Uh, the, 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 the large numbers ain't going to be there like that. Um, the quantity is not going to be there like that most times. Uh, but with Bate, like we see that like this year, is he's made some nice plays. But then he had some plays that he's missed. So it's been up and down. But, again, it's tough when you don't get that many passes that come your way. So it's tough. But, anyway, he said, there's no reason our top wide out is 5'5", five, five, Zay Flowers. He's okay. No, Zay Flowers nice, man. Zay is nice. But, yeah, I was I would love for them to get Devontae Adams. But you ain't got to give up Bateman and Marlo. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, what's up, Engraven? Now that the Ravens have an opportunity to go 2-2, two and two, or now they, they've done it, he said, do you think Harbaugh will be more attentive to game management? It seemed like he was. Except that little, there was that little blunder with the timeout, with the Marlon Humphrey, the, his injury him cramping up and whatnot. But after that, they did their thing. And, I mean, the running game and the offensive line, and it just, they just made it easy for them. So the time management, the, just the management of the entire game was a lot better. Um, he said, playing the Bills will, was a test of how fast these coordinators could change the scheme of things if they weren't working out. Josh Allen is a great quarterback, and he would have had his way with the defense if the Ravens blitzed too much. Uh, the use of Kyle Hamilton uh, was truly the turning point of a Ravens victory yeah Kyle, yeah the way that Kyle he, he's back and I remember the first couple of weeks like uh, some of us were a little scared we were a little worried because like hold up he's not using Kyle Hamilton like we're used to seeing Kyle Hamilton used and that was scary because you don't want to fix something that's not broken but these last two weeks yeah he's back said let Kyle be Kyle and play him to his strengths. My only worry was the play from Roquan. He has put on a few pounds. It doesn't seem as dominant as he was last year. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, he played all right that game. He played all right that game. He did still have his little, but he played all right. He said, also, Ravens needed to run the ball, and they sure did. Uh, Munkin has to mix it up and unleash the ability to call a dominant game, and he certainly did that. Uh, these receivers, they got to step it up and be playmakers instead of route runners. Uh, Mandrews has been quiet too long. And it's time for him and likely to work. Well, maybe next week. <laughs> he said, too much talent on this team to be mediocre. Every season is a short season. And it's time for Ravens to capitalize and win out this year. Hashtag Super Bowl or bust. How we go three and two. Next question came from my guy Joshua. He said, what's up, Engraven? The team keep it clean. I hope you and the family are good mentally and physically. I appreciate that, Josh. He said, I don't know if you remember. I sent an email how we go two and two. What I said in that email is exactly what we did against the Bills and did it perfectly. The Bills didn't have any other weapons other than tight end and Josh Allen, and they will be depending on the run game, which they did exactly. We finally finished, LOL. Uh, now we have to do it the rest of the season. Now we are two and two in the, in second in the division, and we have the Bengals next up i believe we can beat them because they can't stop the run on defense and we have lamar jackson lol and he's eight and one against him uh, the Bengals' offense has gotten a little weaker in the past and they are chase heavy they can't run the ball on offense when we stop the run and blanket chase and make joe bro do check downs we need to tackle that's very important because i do remember that that one game where joe burrow did beat Lamar Jackson, was Lamar Jackson, I'm pretty sure Lamar Jackson was playing that game, but where he beat Lamar Jackson, that, that, that one that you're talking about, where Jamar Chase, he just went crazy, was, it, was Lamar playing that, I'm pretty sure Lamar was playing that game, but Jamar Chase went crazy, he caught a pass, caught an eight yard pass, Marlon Humphrey missed the tackle, somebody else missed the tackle, somebody else missed the tackle, and then Jamar Chase just took it to the house, you, and you saw it last week too, against um, the Panthers, same thing. Jamal Chase caught a little, like, 10, 12-yard pass, something like that. One cornerback missed a tackle. Another cornerback missed a tackle. And Jamal Chase did the rest. He's a great, excellent, amazing wide receiver. But like you mentioned, Ravens, they have to tackle. And it ain't just Jamal Chase, it's T. Higgins, too. Then they got the, um, oh, the other receiver, who's Filipino. Oh, I forget his name. I think Yoshi. I think that's his name, Yoshi. Then they got Mike Gesicki. He ain't no blocking tight end, but he's a pass-catching tight end. He got some hands. So, like... Then they got Zach Moss, who I remember he, he, he Moss Patrick Queen last year when he was on the Colts. But 
Patrick Green is no more, and so neither is. Well, anyway, um, continuing. He said, my question is to you. What do you think we need to do to win in Cincinnati? Sorry for the long message. Hope you and your family are doing great, and thank you. Uh, have a great week. Oh, no, you ain't got to apologize for that. It was, this match really wasn't even that long, but I appreciate you. What do the Baltimore Ravens need to do to win against Cincinnati? Score more points. But no, besides that, um, just be physical at the line of scrimmage. The, the biggest thing, I think, on defense is to tackle. Don't let a, a small play turn into a giant one. Uh, and then on offense, uh, run that ball. Go at Cincinnati's weakness, um, but attack. Keep attacking. Attack, 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 and don't let up. Because Joe Burrow is a quarterback who no, a lot of Ravens fans don't like Joe Burrow. I feel like Joe Burrow's overrated. I feel like Joe Burrow this and that. But Joe Burrow's a quarterback. They could be down. They could be down in the game. And he find a way to get them right back in it. A couple of throws here, a couple of quick strikes, because they got the receivers to do it. Um, so he could be right back in it. So it's, it's important for the Baltimore Ravens to keep scoring touchdowns. Also, like it has been, pass rush just got to keep at it. Pass rush got to keep killing it, just keep crushing it, and keep doing what they've been doing. Next question this came from my guy, Javo. He said, once reading this, I'll change my mind about not getting him if we can bring Devonte adams in for one year and somehow rework his contract to the point we can pay kyle hamilton uh travis jones uh tyler linderbaum and zay flowers i'm all in for it look they they could do that they, they could rework like it's, it's always ways to get stuff done if you want to make stuff happen like because what kyle hamilton ain't going nowhere and they, i know they won't but Ravens don't mess with, don't even entertain. Kyle Hamilton ain't going nowhere. I'm letting y'all know that now. Linda Flinder, Tyler Linderbaum, he ain't going nowhere either. Nowhere. So they came out. And Zay Flowers, I don't want him to go nowhere. Ravens don't play. Don't play. Y'all already got rid of one Florida Raven. And I know he wanted to leave. But still, I I I I was I remember just being very upset about that. We, we got to have as many Florida Ravens as we possibly can. We got to keep as many Florida Ravens as we possibly can. You see what they do? Lamar Jackson, obviously, duh. Zay Flowers, obviously, duh. Derrick Henry. Yeah, he's from Florida, too. But anyway, um, he also said, uh, the hay is in the barn. Finally, a game where all three phases of our game played great, and we didn't have to stress over keeping the lead. Here's my thoughts on the game. Number one, we should keep this O-line starting lineup. I agree. Number two, Munkin was in his vault with the play calling. I agree. Uh, three, all of the playmakers at wide receiver and tight end made plays. Zay, Bate, Nelly, I wish he would have caught that one-handed catch, though. That was tough. I, I could not put that on Nelson Aguilar at all. I, wasn't I wish he would have caught it, too, but that was like... That was tough. Lamar was under pressure and just put it up for him. And he gave Nelly a shot, but I, it, it was just tough. It, it was a really tough catch. Uh, anyway, he said in our number one tight end, Zay. Uh, Mark Andrews' body is on the team and nothing else. Wow. He's missing easy catches, and he missed the block that caused LJ to fumble the ball. That fumble was still on Lamar. Don't get it twisted. Like, yeah, Mark Andrews missed the block, but that fumble was still on Lamar. Anyway, he said justice didn't give the Bills any justice with his performance running and catching. I like that little pun there. He said, only bad thing I can say about the King is that I wish he had hit the 200 mark. Yeah, Ravens could have gave it to him. He gave him that yard, whatever. But anyway, um, number seven, Lamar Jackson played like he is on a mission. Accurate passes and once again spreading the ball around and getting Bate involved. Bate could have had a touchdown, but the DB was holding, holding him the whole route. Number eight, defense played great outside of that blown coverage because that's when they were eye-glazing at Josh Allen, which caused Khalil to get behind them for that touchdown. Well, that almost touchdown. Then a touchdown came like a play later. Uh, number nine, he said, Ojabo is here. Super Duper Kyle is back. Wiggins going to be a stud, especially when he learns how to catch because he had two interceptions. Yes. Once he saw catching, ooh, that's it, baby. That's it, man. But anyway, he said, number 10, uh, Z.O., Zo, Zach Orr was in his vault as well as holding the Bills to just 10 points. Well, technically three because that touchdown wasn't on him. Shutting down Cook with only 39 rushing and holding Allen to under 200 passing with zero touchdowns and under 30 yards of rushing. That's amazing. Josh at like, cause again, Josh Allen is like that. So to hold him, to, that's amazing. All right, so number 11, I'm glad we didn't have to see Tucker kick. Yes, we, yeah, that was a nice relief. Give him the, give him the game off. Let him just kick the, the point after the touchdowns. He said, number 12, my last one is, what's Hardy doing that Wallace can't do? I, I get that. And I, I would have Wallace at punt return. I would have him there um, for sure. Uh, and I, I would even, I would try him at kick return too, just to see. But punt return for sure. Because so far, and I know it's just been four games, and sometimes you just need that one break, and maybe it's the blocking or what. But 
I, I, I would try. I would try Tyler Wallace there. See if he could give the the Ravens special teams a spark. He said, "Number thirteen. Um, may God bless you and the family, especially with the weather as of late. Let's get ready for them Bengals. And like the they once was undefeated, like the once undefeated Bills were. I'm out. Perfect ending.